All right, what's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to some structure free learning. And in this video, hopefully, this is the first of a bunch of example problems using the moment area method to calculate slopes and deflections of beams. And we're going to start off pretty simple here. I got a cantilever beam with a concentrated load P at point B and the length of L. And the EI, aka flexural rigidity, is constant. I've drawn for us, or I've written for us, the moment area theorems, number one and number two, just the equations that, that were needed. And what we're going to do here is find the slope and deflection at point B. So the first thing that we want to do is really do a bunch of static stuff, which is enough to generate the moment diagram and then the curvature diagram. So from equilibrium equations, I know that I have a vertical reaction here at A, of, which is, has a magnitude P, and a moment reaction at A, which has a magnitude P times L. And if I draw that shear and moment diagram, I, I know that my moment diagram will look like this. And hopefully I don't need to draw the shear, but here, ah, ah, why not? I'll draw the shear moment diagram anyway. So the shear is constant has a magnitude of P. This is the shear diagram and the moment diagram because my shear is constant. My moment diagram is linear and has the value starts at negative PL over here and goes to zero. That looks zero-ish. Minus PL. Yes. And here is my moment diagram. And because my EI is constant, I can just straight up divide this by EI, and I would have the curvature diagram, which would have the exact same shape. So bam, by moment diagram, I have sh curvature diagram because, again, EI is constant. Now, to calculate the slope at point B here, we have to apply the moment area theorems. And so going from A to B, and remember, the slope uh, this moment area theorem 1 is the relative or the change in slope going from one point to another. And in this case, we're going to go from point A to point B. And the reason we want to go at point A is because point A is fixed, which means that we know that the slope at this point, or if you let me draw the deflected shape real fast, boom, will look like this. If I Here, the slope at point A is equal to 0 theta a equal to 0. And what we want to find is the slope at this point, which I will use purple. This is, I want to find this slope, theta b. What is that? So if I go through over here, and if I apply, so I want to apply the moment, I'll apply theorem 1, ma, I'll just call it number 1, right here. And I'm going to go for, for this, I'm going to go from the slope at B from A is equal to the integral from A to B of the of curvature diagram M over EI times DX. And really, you know, I don't, I'm not going to write a function and try to do it. All I got to do is calculate the area of this bad boy right here. Boom. This area and that, that change in slope, which also is equal to the slope at B because slope at A is equal to zero, is just one half the widths or the base this distance was L times the height which is minus PL over EI and that tells me this slope is minus PL squared over EI and if you study if you look at the units close enough it'll tell you that it comes out in units of radians now it's nice that in this specific example that you got a negative result because the slope at point B is actually negative if we have based on the coordinate system that if this is X and this is a positive deflection here and that would actually be a, a negative slope. Most of the times you know you can calculate that change in slope between two points but you've got to use the, the drawing or you know your understanding of the deflected shape to make sure and confirm that whether it's negative or positive slope. Now for the deflection at point B, we're going to use moment area theorem 2, which is the tangential deviation or the vertical deviation between the point and a tangent line. And in this case here, we are looking here, here is point A, the tangent line at point A is just straight across. So that's nice. And we want to find this tangential deviation. And let me use a different color. Let me use orange here. This 
deviation, which will be the deviation to point B from the tangent line at A. If I go down over here, I want to apply this TB with respect to A is equal to from A to B or X bar times A to B you know M over EI times DX really which is the first moment of area of this purple shaded area and the distance X bar this is the centroid of my triangle maybe that was a little too much centroid let's go right here if this is the centroid of my triangle right there then I have I would say that this distance to where I want the tangential deviation this would be X bar and this would be equal to two-thirds L so when I apply this right here this is just going to be two-thirds times L times the area which we, we found before which oh, oh I almost forgot the two up here shame on me so here this two-thirds times L with times minus P L squared over 2EI which was the area of that triangle and this becomes minus PL cubed over 3EI and what that negative means is that point B lies below the tangent line that we're we're referencing if you will so here this point B but you remember point B has moved down to here here is point B it lies below the tangent line at A and therefore it is negative PL cubed over 3EI and it also happens that in terms of the vertical deflection this delta B it's also minus PL cubed over 3EI indicating that it's below the x-axis alright so hopefully that was a nice introductory example pretty simple and straightforward let's see if we can do something a little bit more complicated next see ya